So good morning and good afternoon, everyone, uh, to this uh, in Asia Pacific, and uh, good evening to those who are joining us in, in North America. I'm Julian Gordon. I'm the VP Asia Pacific for the Linux Foundation Public Health Initiative, and I'm delighted to introduce this webinar on this exciting and timely Global COVID Certificate Network, or GCCN. GCCN is a new initiative launched just a few weeks ago based on the Linux Foundation Public Health's work as part of the Good Health Pass Collaborative. And we think it would be of great interest to tech companies, public health authorities, developers, and other interested groups here in Asia Pacific. And we welcome everyone to get involved in this important project. In very brief, GCCN aims to enable interoperable and trustworthy verification of COVID vaccination and test results across borders for the safe reopening of travel. And key to all this is privacy. GCCN's work is using digital identity in a decentralized privacy-preserving way. It'll put data under the control of individuals and take it away from centralized databases. This is a really exciting space with a lot of ideas, a lot of valid concerns regarding how it scales up and addresses privacy and how we can do this in a cooperative way. GCCN is our major thrust in this domain. It builds on so much of the work we have been doing. With that, I would like to hand over to Lucy Young. Uh, Lucy has been leading our efforts in this domain, putting together the coalition of different organizations, relationships with governments, and the early stages of the Global COVID Certificate Network. So with that, I'd like to hand over to you, Lucy. Thanks very much, Julian, for the, for the great introduction. Hi everyone, and uh, I'm, I'm Lucy Yan. I'm on the LPH staff team and also I'm the community director of the COVID Credentials Initiative, which is hosted by Linux Foundation Public Health. And like, I'm one of like the people who is based in North America. I'm in Toronto, Canada. So like uh, good evening to, to those who are in North America and a good morning and, and afternoon to those that are in the Asia Pacific. And I'm very excited today to share it with you. So first introduce you like the GCC and efforts and as well as sharing with you some exciting update that happened in the past three weeks since we launched. So first, let me make sure I can share my screen. Can everyone see, see my screen? Yes, we can. Oh, okay, great. Cool. So as Julia mentioned, a Global COVID Certificate Network is a new Linux Foundation public health initiative. And the goal is to enable jurisdictions to safely reopen borders. So through interoperable and trustworthy verification of COVID certificates. And as many of you may know, a Linux Foundation public health, our initial focus on, on the vaccine certificate side has been more on the vaccine credentials, vaccine certificates, because our relationships, our existing work with public health authorities and, and governments who has the oversight over vaccine distribution and vaccine and, and, and the issue of vaccine, digital vaccine records. However, the GCC effort covers, supports more than just vaccine certificate. It supports three use cases and vaccination and test results and, and recovery from, from infection. And, and this is very much aligned with the EU efforts and also the most up-to-date uh, get line from WHO. And in the LPH, we're working with governments and industries as well as tech, tech solution providers, whether you're vendors, software vendors, or you are a system integrators, and as well as many of the work nations who have already show support to GCCN, GCCN, as well as the broader LPH community to jointly develop like three mainly, uh, three components. One uh, is the first and foremost is a trust registry network and is a complete set of toolkit for jurisdictions to build their COVID certificate ecosystems and a vendor network. So I will get a, a deeper into those three components in a bit. So first let's, let's, let's together look at what is, what is actually the current state of COVID certificates and as many of you like have noticed, so this space has been complicated and fragmented and also to some extent confusing. 
because there are many, many levels of efforts and many parties like governments, industries, individual companies are involved, are, are doing you know, different things, we're doing things together. So what one effort um, that is of large scale, of larger scale probably, <laughs> and, and uh, it's very well organized, organized and coordinated, as well as uh, guided by legislation is the EU digital COVID certificate, which I believe now since July 1st, all like the member states in the EU are, are going are live with the national, uh, with their own national certificate systems and which is connected to the EU gateway. So what essentially the, the EU digital corporate certificate includes is pretty much what the gateway and the national systems. And the gateway itself is essentially a centralized storage of public keys of member states. And, and, and also shared, the, the list of pu uh, public keys also shared with member states. So the member states, so one member state can access the public key uh, to know when they're verifying the credential to know actually two things. One thing, and to do two things, verification and validation. So verifying if a certificate is signed by a trusted party, right? Trusted party by the EU. And another it, validation is validating if a certificate is, is, is valid or not. So those are like the, so, so the EU gateway is a centrally, is a centralized, centrally managed system by the EU and then also like the tree the keys obviously are registered in registered in the storage and repository are like the registration process is defined by the EU and, and only accessible to the EU member states uh, as well as other other parties who are allowed by the EU and and and, and the gateway even though it's manually is managed uh, uh, in a centralized way by the EU, but at the same time, it provides a flexible framework for the member states to decide at their, at their state level how they want to distribute the public keys and also how they want to create and manage their own trust registry of trust uh, authorized issuers and verifiers. And, and, this, and, and, and while allowing them to verify certificate issue from uh, other member states. So this is so this is a, 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 a the EU gateway is pretty much kind of a, a coordination system, and and also a trust anchor for the EU member states when they're verifying certificate. So the, the EU each member state system is connected to the gateway and can talk to the gateway and also can download information, update information from the gateway so they can use for the verification of certificate nationally and locally, and and beyond the EU gateway. The, the EU also provides the member state a, gui a guidelines, tool, tools, uh, technical specifications, and open source uh, reference implementations for the member state, so they can easily and quickly develop their their national certificate system, which can talk uh, through to the EU gateway and also building on the same data structure defined by the EU. So after the launch of the EU EU system, the EU digital COVID certificate. So there are some challenges that uh, that emerge were becoming more more and prominent. First and foremost is is the lack of a global trust architecture. So the EU gateway, the EU digital COVID certificate, is covering is only covering the EU where whoever the EU will step into the system, and and it won't and and, and most of the jurisdictions and the countries won't be able will won't be participating in that ecosystem. So the question here is how. Uh, others, how can other jurisdictions, other countries, you know, build that trust with each other so that they can make decision about whether or not to accept the certificate from another jurisdiction. Another challenge is government policymakers and technology and their technology team still don't have enough clarity about what is the best way to build and manage COVID certificate systems. And, and then with that, and given all these challenges, so we ask ourselves, like as a global uh, work nation, you know, helping public health authorities and their partners to build open source software, what can we do to reopen borders, to safely reopen borders in a trustworthy and, and interoperable manner? So here we are today. So we created uh, the Global COVID Certificate Network about three weeks ago to address these challenges. And then the most important part, like, what we call the trust refugee network 
is, is serving, will be serving the similar functionality as the EU gateway, as an interoperable trust and key a trust management system. So essentially the, the trust registry network we're building will provide every jurisdiction in every country a way, a mechanism to list themselves and to register themselves and, 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 them, and their, their trust registry as well as the governance framework they use to govern, govern like the, the certificate issuance and, and verification into the network. So, so all the participating jurisdictions where other where countries can, can find each other. There's a way they can find each other and a, a way for them to contact each other so that they can decide whether to accept each other's certificate. And the role of PH will play in this will, will be facilitating the development of a trust register protocol that will allow each, each participating each participant in the network to, to talk to each other. So think about and so so think about like Google and Gmail. So essentially it, it will, will be a standard, it's a, it will be a standard that doesn't really matter which vendor you're using or which software you're using, as long as they're building on the same protocol, the trust registry can talk with each other. So another important role that we're going to play is how is, is to set up like initial governance of the network, right? How what what will what will be needed for for one to participate in this network and facilitate the initial entities that are part of this network to self-govern moving forward. And just to summarize, what, what are like the key differences between the EU gateway and the GCCM model? So both, both models are actually providing trust registry directory. But the way the EU is doing it as a, as a regional central authority, right? they can define and, and, and who they can define the rules and also who can participate. And the same thing as the member state as an, a central authority at another level can define who can be issuing and who can be verifying. And, it, and, 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 and also like at the EU gateway level, there will be a trust registry of, of actual public keys. But in the GCCN model, I mean, we won't be deciding who will who uh, can participate. But what we're gonna do is provide like the rules, like the basic minimum rules, like what if you want to participate, right? I mean, our goal, our, our focus now, and given Linux Foundation Public Health relationships are on like the jurisdictions where like efforts at jurisdiction level or at the government level, but essentially this, the GCCN model will be a peer model, right? It doesn't really matter, you know, who, if your country were not, it doesn't matter if you can meet the minimum criteria, if you can provide the minimum information to be listed as a part of the network. And, and, and so, so, and also we won't be managing a, a centralized the key storage and the key will, and the, the way the key will be managed will be a, 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 the jurisdictions following the trust register protocol that they are gonna do that by, by implementing that protocol. So at the end of the day, they can talk with each other not necessarily through the GCC network. So GCC network is providing them a mechanism so they know that how they can do it, what tools they need to use so they can talk to each other directly. So that's like the, the kind of essential differences between the EU model and the GCCN model. So beyond uh, the, the trust registry uh, network, we're also providing two other very important components, which is uh, it's the complete toolkit. Right, is it's what the technical specifications, the minimal like data data sets, as well as the implementation guides, as open source reference implementations, so that the jurisdictions can have enough information and tools to build and implement their 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 COBA certificate systems, and in a, in a privacy preserving and interoperable way. And uh, and last, the vendor network. So if the jurisdiction doesn't have a vendor yet where they want to work with the vendor who has experience building in this space. So we have, we will build and actually we already have a community of vendors, both at the Linux Foundation Public Health community and as well as the COVID credentials initiative community, vendors who have done those work and who are eager to help jurisdictions to build, to build, uh, to build the, the, the systems. 
And it sounds a, a lot of work to do for GCCN, but the good news is like GCCN as, as uh, Julia mentioned earlier, is not, it's building on, it's not starting from scratch. It's pretty much building off the good house pass interoperability blueprint, which, which is now nearing its completion and which just went through a public, uh, public, public review process. So a very, like very briefly, the context, the background here of the, of the blueprint is, so it was, it's, it's an effort of the Good House Path Collaborative and managed, initiated and managed by ID2020 with the goal to provide recommendations, a complete set of recommendations for, uh, for COVID house pass, for COVID travel pass and COVID certificate systems and allow, uh, and particularly for, for international travel and, and, and focusing on how how the systems can be built in an interoperable and privacy preserving way. So the recommendations are, are were developed um, as part of the, the, uh, the Good House Path Interoperability Working Group at Trust Over IP Foundation. And, 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 and due to like the, 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 the com due to the, the due process, the community process, the Trust Over IP Foundation has. So, so Trust Over IP Foundation is a sister project of the Linux Foundation Public Health and of the Linux Foundation. So a lot of the work or work prior to the start of the working group was, was, was going on at the COVID Credentials Initiative. That's the reason why we started, we, like when it was started, we, 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 we encourage our community members and a lot of community leaders are leading drafting groups at the working group at Trust IP Foundation. And, and our, our ecosystem director, Kalia Young, who's not able to make it today, and she is also co-chairing the working group. So, so we, like, so CCI and Linux Foundation Public Health would be very familiar with the drafting process and the recommendations, which give us a solid foundation for GCCN. And the idea for GCCN emerged towards like the end of the drafting because we, we feel like it's, it's really, it's great recommendations and how we can get it to, to actually to be implemented as soon as possible. That's like part of like the main reasons why we feel like there's a solid foundation for the COVID, global COVID certificate network. And we want to leverage the good work, the great recommendations that is coming out of the Good Health Path Collaborative to help our just to, to help the government and public health authorities we work with to safely reopen borders. So that's like the broader context of, of what GCCN is building off. And the next step for GCCN, so we, we launched GCCN about three weeks ago and, and our current focus, like an immediate next step for us are like what you, you're looking at on, on the slides. The first and foremost is the technical development and like the, the Good House Pass recommendations are providing a lot of guidelines and, and also like the, 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 the standard, the standards and that we like, a COVID, a good COVID certificate system needs to follow. So we need to define, right? It's very comprehensive, but for us to implement it like in a near term, what will be the minimal viable product, right? Based on the recommendations and how, how we can collaboratively develop the technical documents with our communities and, and, and also how we can how we can also work with our existing projects LPH and also developer communities to develop the code bases and right, the open source reference implementations. So that's one of our key focus um, in at LPH. Another important um, like focus for us now is we talk about the EU earlier, but the EU has has their own like system. So it will be very important to figure out how the GCC how the GCCN model right, can can talk was the EU model. So we're working, we're collaborating with relevant EU institutions to explore and create conversion mechanisms between like the EU COVID, uh, COVID certificate and the new existing COVID uh, certificate ecosystem through GCCN. And the third thing is interoperability pilots. So there are existing COVID certificate systems which are running and very, very similarly to the model GCCN. It, 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 it's creating. And, and so we, we're working now with key existing implementers to set up interoperability among themselves, like through the GCC and model, as well as facilitating the partnerships between 
between countries and, and implementers and, and to, to actually not only, uh, not only set it up, but also showcase that actually this, the model works. So for so we obviously we need a lot of like help from from you guys. So if you're interested, like in how there's multiple ways you can get involved, depending on how you know which you know which part of the which part of like the the space you're in. But in general, if you want to receive frequent updates on GCCN, sign up for for email communication. And if you're already you know if you're part of like the following you know, government uh, agencies or industry alliances that are already running, we're looking to launch a, a COVID certificate ecosystem for border reopening, like reach out to us. And if you're existing implementers, right, and focus on like the, the real border, border reopening cases, reach out to us and also we have a GCCN channel and, and also like the CCI, in CCI community, we have like a lot, a lot of implementers who are ex exchanging experiences with each other. And for developers, and if you want to start contributing today, and we have like two great projects, the COVID Credentials Project, Cardia and Macres, which are also working very, very hard to evaluate, you know, how they can get, you know, how, how they can support the GCC and efforts and how they can, you know, turn the Good House Pass recommendations into implementable, you know, SPACs and, and code bases. And a few a few updates um, since the launch, so we've so we've worked uh, we're working to actually build a very you know, simple view for like for our potential implementers and governments and jurisdictions to understand what it, the GCCN model is essentially about. Right? So so that so the what actually so that that is build, is building off the Good House Pass recommendations, which essentially it's recommending converting a, co a health certificate, which is the one you receive, is, is a health certificate which you receive um, at, that has more information, has like the complete data of your, uh, of your vaccine certificate or test results or recovery certificate. So that certificate contains most likely a lot more information that you would need for cross-border or even for other use cases. So how we can, have so so we're looking into how we can convert that health certificate into a pass which contains minimal data for travel purposes right so you don't have to present you know you don't have to show that you know every time when you're you know when you're boarding up a, 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 a flight right where you're where you're crossing border when, when you're going through border control so that is essentially the model we're building so i, I we provided here a full view so like you can we will and we'll share the slides so you can look at like different, like kind of a different alternatives. We're thinking about who should be doing that pass conversion, right? and what, and also what are like the key considerations that we we you know we have in terms of like what is the best way to converting it. And another thing is the trust between network uh, definition. So we have we had a kickoff call with a few existing implementers last week. So we have started on the discovery process with the stakeholders and, and potential participants define right, what, so we, we know what we, what we want the trust literacy network to do, but what would be like the initial governance, right? What are the minimal information for, uh, you know, we need for, for, for us to get started. So that's what something we're, we're defining. So if you're interested in, in contributing or participating in that work, so we've included a full document here, which you will be able to see what are the current kind of thoughts we have and some of like the input from, from the existing implementers. And also we will be sharing the slides afterwards and you will also have access to the meeting page of the community group. So if you want to participate in future conversations and you're most welcome to. So lastly, so if for some of you who may not know a Linux Foundation Public Health and, and CCI well, so like Linux Foundation Public Health was started last summer and focused on working with public health authorities, you know, and as well as like the key stakeholders of public health authorities to ensure that investment into public health technology like meet the need and have maximum impact. So the Linux Foundation Public Health started with exposure notification apps and, ex and expanded into COVID as COVID credentials and COVID certificates. That's why in, they, they took in the COVID credentials initiative like in December last year 
And that's when I joined, I was like my colleague, John, who will be joining me for the Q&A session. Like we, we joined together as staff of LCH and the COVID credentials initiative, like now, so we are an open global community, right? Welcome everyone, you know, free for every nation and every individual to join. So we're collaborating as a CCA community to enable the use of open standard based privacy preserving credentials and related technologies for public health purposes. So we, we are now like, you know, our focus on like our standards are the, the focus of our open standards now is that we receive our credentials. We're also having conversations and inviting uh, experts and community members from other like, standard communities to join and have, have discussions with us and how we can collaborate and how we can understand more about other, other standards and expand our work into other areas. So, so now we're working very, very closely on the standardization efforts and we're supporting Linux Foundation Public Health as well as you know, other initiatives to incubate ideas for, for credential related projects. And for example, for, for LPS, particularly for potential open source code bases for, for COVID credentials, where I think uh, hopefully we can expand beyond just COVID in, in, in the near future too. So with that, I am gonna like, stop and see if any, any questions from, from the chat, from the group. Sharing. Do you want to? Exactly. You want to stop sharing. So I think we have a number of questions. We've got a few questions in 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 in, in the chat, and please, people, do ask. We do have Lucy and and John, who are very much the force behind a lot of this this activity, right? Right from the beginning with CCI. So uh, uh, you know, and, and thank you, Lucy. That was a great great presentation, right? Um, so we've got a few questions. So. Um, from Haishin Zhang, who, who I know, Z League, right? So uh, how many countries and organizations are involved in this network? Lucy, that's probably your question, right? Uh, actually, I didn't <laughs> do the counting yeah. yet. But I, so <laughs> we, we, put, yeah, we put together the efforts yeah. within two weeks, pretty much like the two weeks, you know, actually put it together. But when we're launching, we're releasing uh, the GCCN efforts, we already have, I think over 20, like over 20 uh, like organizations who are you know, expre you know, <laughs> expressing their support to GCCN. And in terms of countries, uh, I, I believe like uh, LPH is working with at least over 20, 25 or over 30 countries already. So all these countries, even though not as you know, directly, you know, doing any projects, but we are, we are speaking with them very actively about GCCN. And, and probably because the effort was put together like, you know, very, very quickly. So it's, you know, you probably won't see like, you know, the country's name in a press release, but in, in the main press release, you will see a lot of like the key implementers who are working with other countries who are with, with, with like the very, very key industry alliances. To give you an example, like, um, so one, one of, uh, so CETA, right? The, 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 the technology company who supports, you know, governments and the border controls, airports and airlines, right? They are, they are one of the supporters of, of one of like the, the, the LPH code bases, the Cardia project. And they're also the, the initial contributor of that project in, in DCO is on our press release. And, and also like now like CETA is actively participating in the conversations in the um, in the trust registry and network as well as others, right? and, and another example would be um, like IBM is working with like New York State and with working multiple EU countries and also very actively participating, and and also like you know contributing to to this effort, and and also and as many of you may know, multiple kind of like countries join uh, and they're they're a partners like join Linux Foundation Public Health as as like a member, right? So the, all those are like our key stakeholders and the people we're actually speaking to. Um, and and, right. and Julian, before I got to, to further questions, I, I, want, I do want like John like Walker, our, our community architect at the COVID Credentials Initiative, who is also leading the technical work at, at uh, um, for GCCN to introduce himself a little bit. And also like, you know, any technical questions, please, you know, please feel free to ask and John is the best person to answer. And John, I think he's got his question on there, right? Yeah, the question there, John, how about you? You introduce yourself and, and address the question. Thanks, Lucy and Julian. Um, yeah, so John Walker, I am the community architect for CCI. Um, 
under the uh, auspices of LFPH, and we're very excited about launching GCCM. Um, basically, as Lucy laid out, I think uh, pretty articulately in the with the uh, the construct of the slides, uh, what we want to do based on what we've heard from a number of uh, jurisdictions and private entities uh, is build a directory of trust registries. And this is um, it's a new construct, not a new concept, but a new construct uh, that we want to put together to support uh, the variety of both private and public sector initiatives that uh, have we're in dialogue with and are basically there's a lot of um, you know just buzz about uh, in this space right now that people are realizing that as our digital uh, authorizations and credentials are coming into uh, being implemented that the interoperability between entities using those credentials is critical. And the way to get to that scale uh, we see uh, is what we've heard from the people, the, again, the, our partners and participants is to build a basic a directory, right, of all these trust registries. And so we're working on the definition of that directory and the protocols that we'll use to exchange uh, uh, machine to machine dialogue be between uh, directory entries. So that's the effort we're, we're engaging in. Um, as Lucy has described, uh, we'd love to have your input and we think there's a great opportunity uh, in, in the near future and midterm future um, for this. So thanks. And please, any questions? So we have a few here, right? So there's, there's, there's actually, Heinshing's just asked a very generic one. What is the tech behind the scene of, of the GCCN? So the tech behind the scene is being defined right now. It will be based on uh, certainly the fundamentals of the uh, W3C verifiable credentials, the best practices there for encryption uh, on those credentials. It will likely use some of the constructs being described in Good Health Pass. Uh, one of the constructs is called the Trust Diamond. So I please uh, refer you to those, those documents of how individual trust registries of uh, best practices for individual trust registries would work. And then we are really uh, working on um, the structure of the, a directory or a list of uh, trust registries and a uh, protocol uh, to exchange information, basically, so trust registries can discover each other and, uh, and identify attributes that they want. Uh, basically, we will be building that. But it will likely be, be built on Again, a lot of the, the work that's going on in the uh, in the SSI space, um, and you know, uh, publicly available or distributed rules engines. So that's we would again we invite you to come in be be a part of that dialogue with us. And just just to, to add to what what John said, and I'll and I provided a link uh, to the interoperability uh, interoperability blueprint, which I you know I mentioned earlier, and also John just uh, just talked about. And then, so, so some of the technical kind of uh, like more details you can find from there. It's, it's a long document, but you can have a quick overview like by scanning some of the technical kind of standards or technical kind of like um, direction where we're going at. So yeah. what, what the, 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 the recommendations of Blueprint hasn't done yet is actually the technical specifications, right? It's pretty much what the level kind of the details the EU is providing them the details of uh, providing a, the level of details the EU is providing the member states is not still not there yet in the in in the blueprint. So what we're trying to do is how we can make it more detailed, like into technical documents, right? So that it's it's very super clear for developer or for, for a technical team to know what actually it means in a technical sense. But a lot of like the, the high level technical kind of directions are are defined in like through their recommendations. So if anyone is interested in look at it. But I think essentially, as John mentioned, there, there, there are, I think, two aspects. So one aspect is like how, how trust can be managed in a more decentralized manner, because we're, there won't be like one central authority that is governing everything. And, and, and second of all is how information, right, uh, can be, it, how like, data can be shared like, in a minimal kind of like manner and, and in a pri privacy preserving way. I think one of the questions is, uh, is asking about, let me see. Uh, like how do you attain to provide minimal data? I think we need to coordinate interoperable system and their joint jurisdiction. So I, so I, so I, 
so in the in the GCCM model, right? There's two like there are two tiers. One tier is initial issuer of a health certificate. Right? It can be different kind of systems. Obviously, we we have recommendations. We have like we will provide particular kind of like technical specs for for the most privacy preserving option. But we can't ignore right the existing systems who are not using that best practices. So that's the reason why there's a second tier, which is how we can convert all different kinds of certificates which contain you know, different level of information and, and also in a built in a very different ways in terms of like how, how, how much it provides privacy. So by converting that certificate into a house pass, right? That house pass is, is the core piece of GCC and also it's the core piece of the recommendations from the good house pass is how we can draw like first uh, first, how uh, kind of coordinate amount the participants of GCCN to define right what are the minimal data they would need to actually to convert a certificate into a pass, and who would be the best entity to convert that pass. So when that pass is created and is verified when the person is crossing borders, and the only information that the person needs to share is first. If, if who is coming from, right? Is it coming from a trusted party that's the verifier trust? And uh, second of all, if the certificate is, is valid, right? Is valid or not? And because when that conversion happens, already a verification already already happens, right? Already happens if like data is meet the minimum requirement. So if a trusted party is doing that conversion, which means all the other verifiers, which you know is ver verifying the past, doesn't have to know, doesn't have to process the data at all. So only have to know, you know, if what's your, probably what's your name, right? Like at least you know if you are you, and, and then and also if if you meet the rules, the entry rules they, they set. So that's that's the goal that we're trying to achieve. So I think there's there's a, a another an interesting um, opportunity with the uh, with the directory in GCCN, and that is that we talk about there's obviously a lot of discussion about so what is the minimal data set? Well, the minimal data set actually depends on where you're coming from and where you're going to, right? And so by having the, um, by building a, a directory or a list of entities that are participating in this, we can basically identify, right? And know what those minima, minimal schema elements are and sup supplement those with rules and basically ways of finding other trust registries that either accept or reject those rules. But I think it's important to understand that again, it's it's about where you where you're starting from and where you're going to, right? And and that could be certainly multiple entities and, and where you're going to. And what the again, what we think that the directory offers us is an opportunity to basically um, provide a mechanism for identifying right what the diff different destination patterns are. Let's call them that for the data. And so um, many of those are well published. And it's, you know, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, very doable to uh, provide minimal, minimal data requirements via a pass, as, as Lucy described. Yeah, John made a really good point. I think that's also kind of one of the differences between GCC and model and the EU model, right? Because it's, it's, the EU model is, sim is simpler in a way that because the EU defines what, what a certificate like a valid certificate looks like, right? That wouldn't be the case for the rest of the world because each we expect each jurisdiction where each country make their own rules. So the directory is, so the GCC and trust registry network, right? The directory is pretty much providing a way for, for, for jurisdictions to find out what rules first, you know, and then decide, right? Because the, the, knowing the rules is not like a prerequisite as is the case with the EU. So it was a really great point. Thanks, John. Um, you see there are questions in the chat. Let me, we're gonna cover everything. Let, let me go through the chat first. So will GCC and support ICAO standard for digitally signing travel documents? So, so ICAO's model is certainly a, a very important kind of like, um, like standard that we, we need to consider. I, I, I would say like this point, I mean, certainly there's a plan for working with all kinds of existing uh, certificates or credentials. And our focus now is more on the EU because the EU now is more kind of widely like used and, 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 and more kind of like, um, it's, it, it's more kind of like the concerns uh, pretty much on top of like, you know, government's mind. So we, we're, 
So with IKL, it's, it's a matter of, are we doing a converting mechanism, right? Because they have their, so the way they're managing their keys are different. And, and it's pretty much like a similar in a sense, like it's still, it's also, it's still like the public key infrastructure, right? Are, are we going to include them as part of our trust metric network? Where are we figuring out a conversion mechanism between, you know, IKL and GCCN? That's a question mark. So we, what we're doing with the EU is, is we're, we're, it's more like the later, like how we can do a, have a conversion mechanism because the trust model is different. But with, with other existing systems, it could be, you know, either way, we're, we're probably both ways. So that's, that's something we, we haven't looked into yet, but it's certainly a chaos is something like um, on top of our mind. Is it possible to introduce GCC into governments with an official letter from LPs that can motivate government to join in GCCN? So, so like the way we're, we're, we're doing it because the GCCN model is new. Like the past conversion is not, it's not like, it's, 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 it's something that we feel like a letter is not, is not probably like um, sufficient for, for, for governments to, to, to make a decision to join GCCN. So we, uh, if, you, you know, if anyone needs more information, we're certainly happy to share more materials. But what, what we're doing is how identifying the countries or jurisdictions who have the plans to launch. And we're looking for like a solution who, or, or who already have existing solutions who want to work like have more kind of international interoperability to have a direct conversation to to give them a kind of like more details what we're what we're what problem we're trying to solve and also understand more about what their what their challenges what their, their problem right and, and it's it's more of a conversation stage for us and identifying like the key parties who can you know showcase the model who can provide us the feedback on the model first but if if any if any letters or if any kind of particular ideas that you know you know, you, you want you know, us to do a letter and feel free to reach out and happy to have a discussion about it. Uh, how can the country level get engaged to GCC if they do not use any tech, technical for verification from issuing certificates? So, so the GCCN efforts and also like part of the, the Good Health Path um, recommendations, it also includes paper, right? We're, I, it, there's certain, certain in, you know, compromises you have to make, especially on the privacy end. Like if you're, if you're you know, doing some kind of QR codes for paper, probably John can get a little bit more into it, but, but you know, paper is something like we are doing and we will, we'll, we will provide in, in like that, that kind of alternative. So even if like a country is not using anything technical, it's still, there should still be a way and and verification. Oh, if you're only talking about verification uh, from issuing certificates, so there are already existing verification solutions, right? Because so, some of the um, the kind of like feedback we got is countries because of the you know they're still focusing more on vaccine distribution, right? Like issuing credentials probably is not like their top priority, but they want to see how they can start opening their borders, getting people who have certificates who are vaccinated from outside the country to come in, right? So which means like the verif getting a verification application is important. So we're working with a bunch of existing providers who focus on the verification space for them to, to, to add the GCC model to be able to verify a travel pass or a house pass. Um, and so that you know, the countries, you know, it won't take them a, them a lot of effort to build an entire system. It's just pretty much you know, adopting an app, like a, a simple system they can use to verify and get people into their country safely. Uh, John, anything you want to add? Is this on the, the minimum requirements? Yeah. Question there. Yeah, the, the only thing, the thing I would, I would comment on the minimum requirements is again, by having a uh, directory of these trust registries, um, an individual or a, a software agent can look up and understand what the requirements are, right, of a target trust registry. And so that will really define, right, what the data requirements are and what the requirements of trust are, right? What are the requirements for, you know, a test result or a vaccination result? And by being in, the trust registry and having the definition of what is required, we begin to look up what the what that requirement is. That's how we'll, we believe we can 
generate valid and trusted passes right of this information versus having to go back to the source system and break it all down again right the the um, uh, functionality of the directory of trust registries is to provide this ability to look up and understand what the requirements are and therefore establish trust when you engage or interact with that other trust registry. And I think another thing I would add is, so it's very, very important who is doing that conversion, right? Who is converting a certificate into a pass? Because the verification is actually verifying if, if, if it is from a trusted party, right? So for example, if, if I'm going from Canada to the US and I get a pass, pretty much when I cross borders, the US border control needs to verify if the, the pass I'm showing them is from is signed by a party they trust in Canada or, or in the US, right? It doesn't really matter, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a policy, it's pretty much, you know, they have a, US should have a policy where any jurisdiction have a policy who they trust as the issuer of the pass. So th they're verifying if actually I can say, you know, it's from, you know, which entity, but how they can know Right, if I'm telling the truth, right? That's why I like the verification still need to happen, but that they won't, and they and it won't say anything about the data, but just say, you know, if if actually I like the the, the pass is issued by a trusted party, so they and, and they and, and also like the verifier will already know, and like the party if they follow the rules for the pass conversion, because all the rules will will be will be public. Hope hope it uh, hope explains. Uh, the, the, the question, answer the question. I think that's excellent. Any, any more questions, anybody? I think we had a lot of questions there. <laughs> excellent, I realize it's late with you guys there as well, right? So um, should we, any, any more questions there, anybody? I think we covered them all. Um, I'd like to thank John and Lucy for staying up so late <laughs> and covering it. That's, that's greatly appreciated. Uh, and thank you uh, to everyone uh, 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 joining today and anyone watching this in the future on YouTube, um, uh, uh, please do get involved. I think that the, the, the really uh, the, the, the kind of message to leave is really get involved. The call to action is get involved. Uh, Lucy shared that you know we're, we're looking for vendors who get involved. We're looking for, for governments, for public health authorities. So. Those questions were said, you know, how do I, well, connect with Lucy uh, and for myself in Asia Pacific, and we can help facilitate that with you or, or however you wish to do that. We want to get as many people connected. Uh, we are a community. The more involved, the better, uh, and the better it is for all of us mutually uh, to go through this COVID um, credentials and this great privacy uh, um, preserving uh, way that, uh, that, that, that the GCCN is doing. So with that, thank you, everybody. Take care and look after yourself. Cheers. Bye. Thanks, Julian. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye.